Good afternoon, lovely people. How are you all doing today? I hope you're well. Hmm, yes, afternoon rather than morning. I normally like to get here in the morning, do sort of four or five hours of work, get home and then do other stuff. But, uh, I don't know, at the moment, life's been a little bit hectic and it's taken me till, I think it's about half past 12 now, half 12 to get down here today. And I've got to say, I feel thoroughly discombobulated today. Can't quite put my finger on it. I think there's a bit too much of all sorts going on at the moment. And um, I find I work best on any given day when I, when I can just say to myself, right, that's a garden day. That's a sewing day, needle and thread sewing. That's a shop day. That's an admin day, that sort of thing. But at the moment, like I said, I'm kind of juggling so many things that I'm not having that luxury. So I've come to the garden. Oh, right, sixes and sevens today. So I've come to the garden, obviously, I'm in the shed. There's masses and masses to do today. We're still in that just crazy bonkers hecticness of May. I'm just going to have to make a start. So, two days jobs. I didn't finish my direct sewing of beans the other day, so my lovely bush beans, the rock and core, need to go in. And at the end of them, that's where I'm going to do a little patch of the sunflowers. So the first thing I've done when I've got here today, it's so, so dry. We've been having quite a lot of warmth and sunshine, but also wind, incredibly drying. So even though I had that whole bed covered, the top of it is quite dry. So the very first thing I've done today is I've given it a really good soak so that when I do get to sew it in half an hour or so, there'll be a nice bit of moisture there. Otherwise today, a lot of backup bean sewing. So I've sewn beans, the climbing beans in particular, direct, as you'll have seen by now but I'll always do some in pots as a backup. I've had a quick look this morning at my Coco de Pampol, which I sewed, I think it was about two weeks ago. They're quite slow. Now, oh, I don't know, maybe this is all part of my discombobulation today, but I don't know whether I need to start panicking. <laughs> I won't start panicking. I just mean, do I need to think about re sewing things? Is it too soon? I just can't decide. So I think I've got about 10 of the 50 or 12 of the 50 have come up, two of which have already been taken out by the slugs and snails. So back up sewings for all the climbing beans, and I may re sew some cocoa de pampole today. Then I'm going to do some sewings of the squash, a chocha and loofah. Some as backups and some I'm going to have a go at doing some direct stuff. I'll explain that when I come to it once we're out there. Got a ton of pricking out to do. <sighs> it's crazy relentless isn't it? And the other thing at the moment another part of my discombobulation the weather doesn't know what it wants to do one minute it's really bright really quite warm verging on hot bright bright sunshine gorgeous then it clouds over and feels a bit chilly then the wind picks up it looks like it's gonna rain but we're not due any rain <laughs> i don't know I think it might be, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, we'll see how it goes, but every now and again, I think it's kind of, it's the wrong day for me to be in the garden. It doesn't happen very often. Once or twice a season. And on those days, I sort of, I come down here with the best intentions. I've got all my things planned to do. I start to do things and I think, you know what, I'm just, I'm just not mentally in the right space to do this today. Um, so I'll go and do something else instead. I'll go and work indoors at home. 
that's slightly how I'm feeling today but quite often what happens is once I get going and get stuck into the work the garden works its magic on me and I enjoy it we'll see how it goes I'll start and you know I'll, I'll give myself half an hour or so and if I'm doing it all you know if I'm if I'm miserable doing it I'll I'll basically pack up and I'll go home and I'll do something something else productive but something at home um, so before I do try and <laughs> force myself to get going this afternoon um, a couple of thank yous one I want to say thank you to everybody for your purchases from the shop over this last week brilliant absolutely brilliant that gives me money now to buy a new granny trolley so for those of you who don't follow my Facebook page my granny trolley <laughs> lost a wheel actually one of the wheels it completely sheared off and then the axle broke so I haven't had the granny trolley for the last week or so and I felt lost without it it's crazy so everything I've brought down to the garden today I've had to bring on my back again which is not good for my knees so I have started to do a little bit of looking online to find a new granny trolley but hopefully a stronger one this time um, so yes a thank you to all of you there are a couple of you I've I've privately thanked you already um, you know why so thank you so so much also an, another lovely card to add to the pin board from Wendy Wendy thank you so much for your letter your list making your list making it did make me giggle and some of the things on your list really made me giggle I'd love to share it with everybody but I won't because it was written privately to me but um, yes thank you for that <sighs> it's getting windier and greyer out there Some days, eh? Some days. Right. Shut up, Vivi. Get in the garden and do the blimmin' work. Come on. Okay, so I've just got my four rows of rock and core in. And it's this little, just this little area on the end that I want to have the sunflowers. Um, now, I've never ever sown sunflowers direct. I've always done them in pots to start them off but I thought well I've got plenty of seed here why not um, why not have a go <laughs> direct so for now I'm just gonna I'm gonna plonk a load in if they all come up and it's too many I can thin them out a bit if only one or two come up well so be it. They will. Oh, I need some more markers. They're only going to be quite little, uh, as I understand. But I might want to say, I think we will just do a couple in pots as well. Oh, I can't hold that many. Ah, that's why it's always handy. Things with pockets when you're sewing. So, yeah, just, just the tiniest way down. But the way I figure it, I mean, my neighbours that way, they, uh, all their sunflowers, they just leave them to self-seed each year, and they do great. Do you have one in there? I don't know. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, I definitely think my brain is somewhere else today. But we'll see. Hopefully we'll get a few. And I was looking in the shed. I do have some saved seed from my my own grown sunflowers a couple of years ago that came from the original seed from the kid I was telling you all about the other day. So I'm thinking I might just get a couple of those into a pot and start it too. Yay, okay, happy little sunflowers. I need to just grab one more out. Oh, fiddly fiddly. I don't know if you can hear on the camera, but this wind is really picking up. It definitely feels like it wants to chop with rain, which would be, oh, it would be amazing. It would be, oh, so, so dry. But I don't think it is. Right, get this lot netted against the foxes. Start on the backup beans 
back over at the shed. Oh, I do wish this wind would calm down a bit. Oh, gusty, gusty. I wanted to show you on the end here. Yay! This lovely obelisk. So a neighbour of mine was throwing it out and asked me if, would I like it? And I said, gosh, yes, please. So that's one of the things I'm about to <clears throat> seed in a second. I've also just, have you seen, <laughs> put the bunting up oh my goodness on such a windy day it's so old and faded and really really tatty now where it's oh flapped about for many many a summer but it was a gift from my sister years and years ago she made it for me I do love it it does make me feel cheerful so no matter how tatty I thought I'd put it up today which also means that we're heading into tennis season. Yay! Right, let's get doing some sewing down here. <sighs> the sun's coming out again. And the wind's picking up. Well, we'll just have to manage with that wind, whatever it's going to do. Okay, so... My lovely little fence that I want to cover Last year I tried growing both loofah and a chocha on it. I raised seed at home and they were doing really well, brought them to the garden, hardened them off, put them out. The next day the slugs had them, the whole lot. So um, in, a, in a fit of peak and frustration, it was about the second week of June, I literally, right down by the compost bin end, I shoved one a chocha seed in shoved it straight in the ground thought stop it let's see and that's the that single part covered nearly the whole fence pretty much to here from all the way down there from a direct sewing now the only thing is um they they both the chocha and the lufa they need a really really long season in order to fruit and for the fruits to mature so that one last year it didn't ever come to anything However, it was beautiful. I really enjoyed it. The insects seemed to enjoy it. It gave me a load of compost. So yeah, why not? Now, this year at home, I have four achocha, four lufa growing very happily. They'll be coming to the garden in about a week or so to go into the cold frame to start hardening off. But I thought, do you know what? Why not sow some direct today? Uh, and replicate what I did last year but it's a bit early this year so I'm going to get them sewn and then I'm going to use my um, the water bottles as a cloche again just plonk that there a minute so I'm going to do some loofah in this one with the obelisk I'm going to do some achocha here and then back down there tucked behind the Taunton Dean I'm going to try some of both again direct and we'll just see what happens I would absolutely love it if I can get some um, some loofah to grow to maturity. I would really love to be able to have my own scrubbing brushes. So we'll just have to hope 
and see what happens. I think I would rather have the Lufra than the Achocha. So if I only have one of each here and they start to fight, I will sacrifice the Achocha for the Lufra. Okay, so um, I'm just going to, do you know what? I'm going to slightly over sow because I've got plenty of seed. I've got some saved from last year of my own. As in seed I didn't sow, not seed I harvested. Plus this is a chocha from Grandad's allotment. I'll give them all a really good watering as well. Um, because that rain was a few days ago now and things have really, really dried out. The other thing to say is obviously, I don't know if you saw the video back at the beginning of the year, probably about the beginning of March when I filled these two uh, big pots. I did my little mini hugel cultures. Part of the reason for doing it was to have an experiment and partly it was to, so I didn't have to fill the whole pot with compost because that would have been too expensive. But it will be interesting to see, you know, how that goes over the next few months in terms of providing nourishment. Um, I will fertilise these, both these pots. I will be using my urine once a week on them, some dilute urine. The thing with the material in the bottom of it rotting, it will leach nitrogen. That's what I understand. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's going to leach nitrogen. So my urine has a good amount of nitrogen in it. So a little bit of that once a week or so should help them all along. And the other thing with, these, with both of these is because they're, I'm aiming for the fence just in the front, I'm going to have space to uh, plant out my beautiful French Doulon de Londe sweet peppers. They're the long skinny ones. Beautiful, beautiful plant. I've always done them in the trough by the shed and they're sort of tucked away and it's hard to see their fruits, but the fruits are so gorgeous that I thought, well, if, if I do them here this year, they'll be, the fruits will actually be, they'll be much higher up because they'll be in the front of the tub. So the fruits will be at about two feet high, so I should be able to sort of see them more and enjoy them. Because I think, you know, it's really important we take time to just enjoy how the garden looks over the summer as things are developing and ripening. Okay, so that's the two pots done. I'm going to go and do by the grapevine. Um, I'm going to give them both a bit of a watering, get these cloches on, and then go and do the grapevine end. So I'm down here at the back end of the deck. I've now sewed in there. There's some loofah and some achocha here. But while I was down here getting things ready, Look what I spotted! Yay! Signs of life from my... Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to get in there. Signs of life from my grapevine. How exciting. So, I don't know if it's going to do much this year. <laughs> it's taken its time to show its face, hasn't it? I've been checking everybody else's vines on site and everyone's, <laughs> like, romping away. But at least I know now that it's not dead that that cut cutting did take and uh, yes it's a lesson in patience isn't it fab stuff so that's all the, um, the seeding on the fence and deck to do for today oh it is jolly isn't it with the bunting back up oh yeah you see I've put my cocoa de, po cocoa de pampol trays up here they really don't need to be in the cold frame anymore and you can see how intermittent the germination is but again i'm going to try to be patient because every now and again there is oh and the little sign of one oh and there yeah good stuff so there are a few coming that one was nibbled off and destroyed that one looks oh i don't think that's going to come back to life is it but there are a few there Oh, some more down there. I need to get those out into the sunshine a bit. And then with the cold frame, as I was mentioning, I finally have a few things to prick out. 
some of the herbs but actually let's come into them down here it's easier but the flowers have been pathetic I mean that's oh four or five maybe six I can't remember how many weeks I think it's getting on for six weeks since all this was sown look at this state of my cosmos it's that tiny mind you this time last year it was really tiny too and it just meant that I had mine later than everyone else but it did grow and it did give me some beautiful flowers in the late summer and the autumn There's tons of brassicas to prick out and this is what I was mentioning the other day when I was sitting under the tree some of them have decided to germinate finally I mean it's been crazy some of them some of them the size of them they really should have been pricked out well probably a couple of weeks ago and yet there are others that are only just just coming up however they are coming that makes me happy oh I can see a couple of nibbles I carumba let's get this log trap sorted time to get on with some squash until about three years ago I always used to start my squash in pots in the cold frame at about this time of year beginning to mid-May um, never used to start them at home but then about three years ago I lost every single seed overnight to mice I came back I think I had maybe sowed them on say a Monday and I came on a Wednesday morning for example and I could see every little pot had a little hole in it every single pot so I went scrabbling around in the compost and sure enough mm -mm, not a single seed left so um, in a panic I started some at home so ever since then I've always done a mixture of both starting some at home and starting them in the cold frame <laughs> it's an ambulance um, now the thing I would prefer to just do them in the cold frame a couple of reasons for that <laughs> less space taken up at home um, then I wouldn't I also hang on a minute let's let's set that ambulance pass <laughs> It would be less space at home taken up. I wouldn't then have to cart them all down to the allotment with me. I wouldn't have to go through the whole hardening process, what have you. But the other thing um, I find with with the with indoor versus starting them essentially outdoors, but in the cold frame. <clears throat> when I start indoors, um, and it happened again this year, over the Easter weekend, we had a sudden little mini heat wave really 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 quite hot especially in that window and so within 24 hours loads of the squash brought it and shot out of the soil and they were this big already um, and then of course we've gone slightly back to normal so I've got very top heavy floppy um, squash at home if I grow them in the cold frame although it does get warm in the cold frame at this point of the year onwards I leave the windows of the cold frame open so it doesn't get too hot during the day but more importantly they get cooler at night now obviously if, if there's any chance of a frost or anything sort of below about six degrees centigrade I would close the cold frame up for the night but we're getting windy again but we're currently hovering most nights around eight degrees which is absolutely fine for the squash so I'd rather them grow a bit more slowly with a natural breeze around them less slightly less um, high temperature they'll have a variation of temperature but not as high as at home um, so yes yeah, so I'm doing a backup because the other thing is when I bring the ones from home down to the garden no matter how well you try to harden things off sometimes they're just such a namby pamby costed plant from being indoors they really won't like coming outdoors so 
I'm doing them in quite generously sized pots because the other thing about the whole squash family they really 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 don't like their roots being disturbed they don't like being pricked out potted on what have you which is one of the reasons that I always sow them in an individual pot and give them plenty of their own space so virtually all of the ones I sewed at home let me just put my label in before I forget Virtually all the ones I sewed at home, they, everything's come up beautifully, um, as in they've come up, some of them have come up too beautifully, too fast. However, I'm having the same problem this year as I've had for the last three years with Delicata. I've tried, I've tried different um, seed companies, oh, it's getting so breezy. It's a gust of glass. <laughs> yeah I've tried various different seed companies <clears throat> exactly the same every year I sow anywhere between four and eight seeds and I get one germination so I've just done a whole row of delicata again I, you know I like the taste of them I'm not desperate to have them because of the taste but they're really useful for me because they're a smaller squash so as an individual cutting into it. I don't have a mammoth huge squash to then deal with. I just eat one delicata all in one go. Oh, did I just put one of those in there? Kind of out. No. I need to concentrate. So many different types. So yeah, so um, once again struggling with the delicata this year. And the other one is the birdhouse gourd. I sowed, I think in the end I sowed six birdhouse gourd and not a single one of them came up so today for instance where i've done me a chocha loofah wait for that gust to go on the fence um i'm not even going to bother with the birdhouse good again birdhouse good <laughs> um you know I, I will try again next year but i'm not I'm not going to be fussed this year for them. I'd much, much rather have the loofah. So yeah, but otherwise, most things have germinated well. My, um, all my indoor some cucumbers germinated beautifully. I'll do another tray of cucumbers as backup. And the wonderful thing is, you know, when we do all our sort of little extras is, if all of these germinate and all the ones that I bring from home harden off perfectly well and, and everything's happily growing, I'll have tons of stuff to give away because I know there's quite a few friends of mine down here this year have <clears throat> have been struggling to be here for one reason or another um, so yeah if I can kind of just bear that in mind and have loads of extras of things then when my friends are you know up to being down here again I can sort of say ta-da there you go instant garden <sighs> right trays and trays and trays and trays more to do so I'll finish the squash and cukes then I'm going to do all my backup beans oh I need to pick out the cold frame as well don't I should uh, keep forgetting about that and I need to water keep forgetting to leave time to water at the end of a session oh so I think I'd better shut up and get on
I'm sure I'm just like many of you in that I watch the weather forecast like a hawk. I'm always looking to see what the temperatures are doing, both the night time and the daytime. The daytime, is it going to be so hot that we'll need to water, open the cold frame, that sort of thing. At night time, is it getting chilly? Do we need to close the cold frame? When's the next rain due? <laughs> are we going to get rain tonight so I don't have to water? All that sort of thing. What I never look at, <laughs> today is the lesson, I never look at the wind, either the direction or the speed. But as, this as the course of this afternoon has gone on, the wind is getting stronger and stronger, just swirling and gusting around. I've had trays and pots just <laughs> flying off the table. That seeding compost that I was using is really dry and it's blowing in my face. It's absolutely bananas. I had no idea it was going to be like this today. Um, later on when I go home I'm going to look at the forecast and I'm going to look at the wind and try to get into the habit of looking at that. So I'm going to carry on doing things out there but there's no point filming. You won't hear a thing apart from <laughs> over the um, over the microphone. So yes, I will carry on. I'm still feeling a little tiny bit discombobulated. I can't put my finger on it today. I know that probably, and I might do this. I might finish gardening and I might just sit out there. The wind might do it for me. Um, I think if I'm quiet enough for long enough and just listen internally, I might work out what it is that's bothering me, but there's definitely something bothering me today. Having said that though, I am feeling a darn sight more chirpy and chilled and engaged with myself and my environment than I was four hours ago when I started speaking to you. So that's good. Right, well, the work's not going to do itself. I'm hoping, like I say, that that wind will blow whatever cobwebs I've got, blow it all away. So I'm going to say cheerio to all of you for now and crack on out there and just keep having fun poking seeds into soil. Yay! And then watering. So. Um, I hope wherever you are at with your gardens and your schedule and your everything life <laughs> that you're on top of things and managing everything okay and not stressing about stuff because you know what this growing veg lark it's not meant to be stressful busy sometimes hard work a lot of the time but it should never ever be stressful so if you're feeling a bit stressed by it stop to stop whatever you're doing and look, feel the breeze, feel the warmth of the sun, listen to the birds, focus on one tiny little bee at its work. <sighs> so until next time, please take care of yourselves. I'll see you again really soon. Cheerio for now.